We're going to explore everything from the trade with Egypt, the kind of some of the influences, some of the things that we've exchanged and interacting. Even now, we're, we're tied by the Nile River. Uh, when Christianity came to Ethiopia and expanded, we used to take our popes from Egypt. Hello guys, welcome back to the Jenny Ethiopia Tours. My name is the Jenny Hodes. Welcome back to our series on Intro to Ethiopian History. Last week we talked about where Ethiopia's history comes from, how Ethiopia's history is put together, and all the different elements that we're going to be looking at. And today we're going to be exploring Ethiopia's history with Egypt. So Ethiopia and connection with Egypt, because this goes back all the way to as far as our two histories go. Ethiopia and Egypt seem to be two countries linked by faith because since the beginning of history, we have traded, we have been interacting. Even now, we're, we're tied by the Nile River. Uh, when Christianity came to Ethiopia and expanded, we used to take our popes from Egypt. So very long history, very long partnership. And I hope you guys like it. Let us know what you think. Uh, and we're gonna explore everything from the trade with Egypt, the kind of some of the influences, some of the things that we've exchanged and all that and what that means. One of the things that we're going to start with is trade. So Ethiopia and Egypt have been trading since historians say since the beginning of the both history of both countries. And it's one of the best re recordings are in the fourth dynasty by the pharaohs because they had on the tombs and at different places. There's a lot of writings about, you know, what kind of people they were and all that kind of stuff that they were trading with. So during that time, this whole area, southern part of Egypt, all the way to the southern part of Somalia or even slightly farther from there, was known as Punt. So the land of Punt. A lot of people might, you've probably studied it in history in different parts, uh, you know, the Punt and the Kush dynasties or areas. And those are, it comes from there and that's the trade. And Punt is the first name used for this whole region, southern part of Egypt, all the way down slightly past Somalia. And with that said, you know, they traded for all over, but because of the way the sh their ships were and the navigation systems and everything, historians predict or theorize that they probably came down by, by the Red Sea, all the way down to where Ethiopia or Eritrea is now, from there traded all the way in to Ethiopia. There is some recordings of in history of pharaohs sending some of their captains through land, so they just pretty much hiked down to Ethiopia, which is pretty cool. So Punt is the first name that they used, and uh, you know within that, about in the Middle Ages, then the new name came up into existence of the Kush dynasties. So the Kush is a slightly smaller area, slightly southern from uh, Egypt, so it's a smaller part, and they had a lot more impact or a lot more influence with Egypt. Punt, as historians say, is only partly just commerce. They just traded, uh, they didn't really stay that much. Uh, as we'll see earlier on, in, even in Ethiopia, there's places where they stayed, but they, di they didn't leave much influence because they, you know, they don't live here. But during the Kush dynasties in different areas, they had influence of custom, culture, uh, commerce, and different areas. And some of the areas became directly under the influence of Egypt. So one of the other things that's really brought up in a lot of different texts and manuscripts and hieroglyphics of the Egyptian pharaohs and different inscriptions is this area of Punt is said to be the land of the gods uh, and specifically around the Ethiopia area, it seems to be that they referred to it where the gods lived and resided. Um, and that is a very cool name. And past the, the Punt uh, area, or which the boundary, after that the world ended. That's what they believed. P past Punt is the end of the world. And past that is, you know, uh, land of the ghosts is what is written in history and different parts. So one of the areas, obviously the main reason for these two countries or these two areas to really interact was trade. 
uh, and they traded everything. I mean, from animals, you know, apes, bulls, donkeys, uh, ivory, different types of ivory, uh, different types of gold, silver, uh, everything. One of the main ones, though, the key to everything was frankincense and other types of incense. And so this frankincense, they it's said to be that traded about, you know, 14 different types uh, and in Egypt in the, with the pharaohs and in the temples for the gods, these 14 different types of frankincense had their own purpose for each different kind of prayers and ceremonies and rituals, uh, all, all sorts of stuff. So this was a very, the main uh, trading thing, cause. And it's, you know, in some of the Queen's dynasties, uh, there's, there's been such a huge influx of frankincense from Punt. One of the other questions then is, what is traded in exchange? What did Punt get for all this ivory, frankincense, animals, and all that stuff? There is a picture of a holographics for Egypt. It's a picture of, you know, some of the bracelets, uh, manicure stuff that they, they use for for the ladies, makeup stuff, tools, axes, uh, you know, farming equipment, uh, that kind of stuff. So it seems because that captain was coming to Punt that that was what was traded between the, they brought those tools and different kind of equipments and garments from there. And from the Punt area, they took a lot of different the raw materials for different things that we talked about, all the way from the rituals to stuff to make garments, uh, equipments, musical in instruments, eye makeup, like cosmetics was one of the big main ones that they took. One of the big gaps in history is from the 7th dynasty till the 10th dynasty. It seems like there's, there was not much trading going on because there's no recordings during that time. Um, historians think that that's because Egypt during that period of time was going through a lot of internal wars and internal conflicts, so they didn't emphasize the expeditions they were doing to Punt or Kush. So therefore, there's not a lot of recordings and everything, but just because of the significance of, let's just say, frankincense by itself in the rituals and the temples and in different areas, historians predict that this was probably, you know, still going on and they treated and they brought it in somehow, but wasn't recorded because there's so much other things going on internally within the country. But in the 11th dynasty, the pharaoh again uh, reconnected the Egypt and Punt, uh, taking it, you know, to sending an expedition to Punt with, a very, with about 3,000 people. Uh, big emphasis, main part of this expedition also is, as you can guess, Frankincense. It was to bring back as much frankincense as possible, uh, and that was done. And the captain came, went back safely, and the frankincense was delivered to the different temples. So these these expeditions mean a lot to the history of Ethiopia and Egypt uh, because they give us real concrete kind of evidence of the trade that was going on in this area, and to make it, you know, like let's say. Punt was even Kush was a much bigger area than Ethiopia itself. We have to somehow narrow down to the Ethiopia area. From the Ethiopia side, there's not that much evidence of the, this period. There's not a lot of recordings or everything. But there's the main reason: one, they did not really stay that much within Ethiopia. Two, as we talked about in the previous episode, where we talk about how Ethiopia's history is put together, Ethiopia's history was destroyed a lot of the times by the kings with the when in conflict and everything. And the second one is within Ethiopia, there hasn't really been a systematic digging or uh, you know, archeological movement to find these historical things. But in, record, in different recordings, there is certain things that point to where they talk about specifically within uh, Ethiopia, which is areas that are mentioned. One of them is Adulis. The other one is Hamasin and the Tigray region as a whole is very specifically mentioned. And therefore, we can somehow get that at least part of the trade was specifically within Ethiopia and with the Ethiopian kingdom. And that makes it interesting. 
And then there is other influences that we can take a look at within what influences they've left in Ethiopia. So, for example, some of the boats or the traditional boats that are used in the different lakes in Ethiopia, Zwai, Lake Tana, which is the biggest one, and the traditional lakes, the way they built the boats is said to be high, is an influence from Egypt, the way the Egyptians used it, and then Ethiopia learned those things from. Um, different words and different things are influenced by, by them within Ethiopia. For example, the word for incense, etan, is the same word with Ethiopia and Egypt. Um, and there's also up in the you know, Eritrea area or uh, northern part of Ethiopia, there is area where they show a grave of an Egyptian. But by tradition, by the way, uh, they say tomb of the pharaoh, which wasn't a pharaoh, it was, a, it was one of the captains or one of the people that you know, came to Ethiopia on one of the expeditions was buried there. But they show it as tomb of a pharaoh because that's the period and that's what it lasted and that shows how old that tradition is. Um, and then within Ethiopian influence, there's you know women wearing the different types of bracelets on their hands up in the higher higher parts of Ethiopia. That is a direct influence from Egypt. The way we use you know the eye makeup, so the women use is a also an influence. Even the word for the Makeup and stuff cool is the same uh, for both. So we have so many different musical instruments. Uh, the cistern, lyre, influenced from Egypt. And therefore, we can somehow, with a certain degree of accuracy, say that Ethiopia and Egypt have had very long connection and these influences. And, you know, it's pretty cool that, you know, these two countries have been tied together for so long, even to today. And then next week, we're going to be also talking about Ethiopia and South Arabia uh, area. And then the episode after that will be on Ethiopia and Israel. Once we do these kind of connections, because a lot, the reason we're starting with all these countries and different areas that Ethiopia is connected to is because those evidences lead to the different historical setups and the different things that we're going to talk about uh, once we start talking purely what is happening within Ethiopia and the kings of Ethiopia and the dynasties within Ethiopia. So I hope you guys like this and you subscribe, you share, and you let us know what you think. If there's anything we should add, any information that we're missing, uh, I'd be happy if you shared it with us. And thank you very much. I hope to see you next week. <laughs>